Mhm. West Shroud remains one of the most obscure locations in the Black Shroud. The area had strange map names that would never be explained, as West Shroud would disappear with a realm reborn. One of these unresolved areas was Knight's Round, located just west of the Turning Leaf Aetherite. For a long time, players wondered if this was a reference to Knights of the Round from Final Fantasy VII. Could it be hinting at a primal? Is it a dungeon? The questions remained unanswered, until someone discovered a cave entrance east of Knight's Round proper. There were in fact two cave entrances in this area, both guarded by wood whalers, Iolaine and Dadanea. Interacting with them would provide you with the following responses. I apologize, but orders have been given. None are to pass beyond this point. You'll not pass as long as I draw breath. Best just go back the way you came. Other than these warnings, nothing else was revealed about what was hiding in the caves behind them. The name of the supposed dungeon inside was often attributed to the name of the area, Knights Round. However, this has never been confirmed. I guess that's my cue. Let's head on inside. Right off the bat, the dungeon looks just like any other Black Shroud dungeon. I'm presented with a staircase heading down. I'm very confused when I reach the bottom only to face a wall. Did the dungeon just end here? After turning around, I see a path continuing ahead of me. I follow the path for a short while and I encounter a torch and a choice between left or right. Left looks the most appealing, so I take a left and start walking. I almost immediately encounter a dark corridor to the left with an ominous door at the end. I would like to point out that the doors have no special markings on them other than these sigils, which I'm not sure if these are used in other uh, Black Shroud dungeons. If not, this might be a clue as to what the, the theme could be here, but if, if you recognize these, let me know in the comments. I pass through, and I find myself in a room with a small table with a lantern, a cup, and a wine bottle on it. There were also four stools around the table, and in the back were several storage cabinets lined up against the walls. We still have no idea how these early 1.0 dungeons were supposed to function, but this looks like it would have been a safe spot, possibly containing NPCs. I'd also like to point out these storage spaces in the walls. This was also something you'd see a lot in the Montai cellars, where fermented beans were being stored. In this dungeon, it seems like they're doing the same thing. My initial thought was that they were making and storing wine here, but since when was wine stored in jars? Anyways, I leave the room and I walk towards the corridor I just came from. I notice an opening directly across from where I came from. I spot torches in the distance. To the left I see the corridor ending in a circular room, similar to those we've seen a million times before. This open space intrigues me. I walk past a bunch of sealed pots and… what the… I enter this massive circular room with this iron thing in the middle. The front has a large door, accessed by these stairs. At the foot of the stairs is this thing, which looks like a control panel of some sort. This looks like ancient tech, moss and grime having settled on the control unit. Could this be Gelmoran technology? Around the front of the machine are barrels, pits and caskets of all shapes and sizes. Even another wine bottle. What does this mean? What was the purpose of this? Is this linked to Knight's Round? Is this Knight's Round? 
I can't contain my curiosity and I face through the large metal door. There's not much going on inside as expected, but it is fully textured, meaning it was intended to open and reveal whatever was hiding inside. There's also this piece of string that comes down from the ceiling. This was clearly meant to hold something, or maybe trigger an effect of some sort, like sparks. This structure could have been intended to hold this dungeon's final boss. After leaving this room, I realized that the dungeon is built around this room, with multiple entrances coming in from all sides through the main corridor. The room itself is also the largest I think I've ever seen in a 1.0 dungeon. When looking up, I noticed these circular holes in the ceiling. I count four of them. I'm baffled at first, but then I realized that they've just taken five circular rooms like the one we've seen a million times and merged them together to form one giant room. The fifth hole being the one in the middle, containing the mechanical contraption. We'll get back to what all of this can mean at the end of the video. For now, let's return to our expedition. Gobsmacked and excited, I leave the room and head to the circular room we saw before. This is just your run-of-the-mill Totorak round room, but it did lead to this door, which in turn led to this room. Another potential safe space with the wine bottle switched out with another one of those jars. Yeah, they're making fermented beans alright. Headed east from that room, I exited through the circular room's third opening, and I'm once again in another corridor. An opening reveals itself to the left almost immediately. A staircase. Could this be the second exit? I head upstairs and I find myself in a large open room. Following the path, I end up in this room with this massive tree in the middle. Now this asset would be reused in Totorak and Tamtara Deepcroft, but it's pretty rare for a dungeon like this to have two unique assets of this size in them. The giant tree room led to this mostly empty room, identical to the one we first discovered in Peace Garden. As I return to the tree room, I notice something interesting. I can see a floor below me. This is a multi-level dungeon. I run out of the tree room, now intent on finding the stairs leading into the lower levels of this dungeon. I pass the entrance heading east. I notice a door to the right. I freeze. There's... there's another one of those devices. And this door is gated off. Clearly meant to open with the control panel. What could possibly be hiding behind this door? Oh. Well. I'm sure this was supposed to hold loot, but that device thing made me hope for something more. Moving on, I encounter yet another one of these doors with a control panel. This one too leads to a storage room, most likely containing some sort of loot. I keep moving and eventually reach this door, illuminated by a torch. This has to be it. And hey presto! Stairs leading down. As I reach the bottom of the stairs in another circular room, I hear this sound. I can't remember hearing that anywhere else, and it does sound like an ethereal gate, so I'm intrigued. I make an immediate left to find the source of the sound, and I find this door. I enter the room and... Nothing. I'm not surprised. The dungeon was never put into service, so finding an ethereal gate here would be, well, impossible. But the sound still persists, and it's the loudest in this room. Could this have been the intended location for this dungeon's ethereal gate? Shortly after simply warping upwards, I realized that the sound I was hearing was in fact the turning leaf ethereal gate. The sound of that gate was so loud it was clearly audible that far down below. As I venture deeper into the basement portion, I notice that while the first floor only had some insignificant damage, the basement was filled with collapsed entryways and corridors. I walk and walk until I reach a narrow corridor. A sound. I freeze. This familiar sound. I sprint towards the sound and there, in a mostly empty room, sitting on a rock. A frog. Not our blue friend, Pedro Caramello, no sir. This one is of a different color. 
Worried that Pedro would get jealous, I greeted the frog before swiftly moving on. I continued my way through the maze. It feels endless. Eventually, I reached the giant tree room. Not much else could be found in the dungeon, though. The rooms all looked more or less the same, with only the furniture being changed slightly and moved around. After returning to the upper level of the dungeon, I decided to run around and look through every single room. After a little while, I encountered the second exit. It's the other cave entrance mentioned before, just north of where we entered. Well, that nails down the purpose of this dungeon. Having two entry and exit points hints that it was meant to function just the same way as the Montai Cellars, an open world dungeon where your mission is whatever your quest log tells you to, be it MSQ, Grand Company, or Leave Quests. But what was the purpose of the mysterious devices? My first thought was naturally Garlean, but these devices do not look Garlean. They're older. They look about as old as the tunnels themselves. Could this be Gelmoran technology? We know very little of Gelmora as a 4.2, and I imagine it will remain that way for a long time, if not forever. But in 1.0, Gelmora was very clearly meant to play a bigger role. The lore was already being fleshed out, and these dungeons were probably meant to play a part in that lore. Alas, as a Realm Reborn launched, most of Gelmora was washed away, ruins covered up, the Monte cellars being turned into zone dividers, and Palace of the Dead doesn't really give us that much insight. I scoured the internet and the lore book for any mention of technology, but I found nothing. My gut tells me it has to be Gelmoran, but we'll probably never know for sure. This particular dungeon, and probably the name of the area itself, seems to have been retconned in a realm reborn. I think the purpose of the dungeon was to obtain whatever catalyst these machines required in order to proceed. It's possible each machine required a specific catalyst to open, hence why the large circular room is always open so players could check if they possessed the required catalyst. I also think the rooms gated by the devices contained the catalyst for the other devices, ending with a final catalyst for the big room. That's just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments as well. And that's where I'm going to leave you all in this episode. I hope you enjoyed your time in the Knight's Round Dungeon. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you want more, you should subscribe. I'll be back next month with yet another episode of Secrets of a Realm. Take care now, and may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.